Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm testing out some new Revlon products, including their new Candid Foundation and Concealer, as well as some teeny tiny little eyeshadow palettes that I found at Walgreens. I also picked up a few more products from their line that I have never tried before. They're not necessarily new, but just things that I'm trying out for the first time today. And to be honest, I was a little bit apprehensive going into this video because um, Revlon has consistently been one of my least favorite brands at the drugstore. If you saw back, I think it was over the summer I did a video on my top five bottom five drugstore brands and Revlon was definitely in the bottom five mainly because while there have been a few hits that I've tried from them the majority of the products have been misses especially when it comes to their eyeshadow palettes I just have never had any luck with those so I definitely was not expecting to like them at all but there were a few surprises in this video so definitely stay tuned to see what those are and why don't we go ahead now and cut to how I got this look and then I'll be back later to do some check-ins and see how everything's wearing all right, so I'm starting out first with the new Photo Ready Candid Foundation. This says um, it's medium buildable coverage, no harsh ingredients, anti-pollution, antioxidant, anti-blue light, and oil free. And I'm using the shade 130. So I thought what I would do is go ahead and apply half of it to my face using a brush. This is the Sony Kashuk number 130. I don't know if this is still around, it's pretty old. Um, and then the other half I'll use like a damp beauty sponge and see if that makes any kind of difference in the coverage. Okay, so I'm thinking right away that this shade is a little too light for my skin tone, but we can make it work. It was really like kind of hard to tell in store because the packaging hides the color of the product a little bit. It's just kind of hard to make it out because a lot of the package is covered by, you know, writing and stuff and there's only a small area where you can actually see the product inside. So, all right, well, I would say coverage is definitely medium it doesn't appear to be completely full i can still see freckling and age spots but it is definitely evening out my skin tone and covering redness really nicely all right so here's one half of my face done and i do like the coverage i think it's pretty decent it doesn't cover everything like i said but my skin looks way more even on this side than it does on this side so that's one good thing the only thing that i will say i'm not liking right now and it's probably going to be hard to see it on camera my skin looks super dry and almost cakey down around my chin area and also on my cheeks and kind of my upper lip area where I have a lot of pores. It seems to be accentuating those and sort of highlighting them because I can't see them as well on this side as I do here. So those are some drawbacks, at least applying it with the brush. So I'm going to go ahead now in with the beauty sponge. This is the one from L'Oreal and I'll see if hopefully that makes those issues a little bit better on this side. sponge I will say it doesn't cover quite as much I feel like I need to do another layer under this eye because I'm seeing like some of that freckling and dark spots coming through um, as far as the chin goes though it does not look as cakey on this side as it does on this side I think it just blended into the skin a lot better with this um, but I do still see the pores pretty well on this side so it didn't really help with the pore issue but I think overall it looks a little bit more seamless and more uniform like the product actually went into my skin versus Versus on this side I feel like it's sitting on top even though it has a lot better coverage with the brush so I'm gonna just go ahead and apply a little bit more to this side just to cover up some of those areas that need it I'm not gonna do this whole side of my face again because I don't want it to get super cakey but um, just mainly this area right here underneath my eye which the pigmentation is hard to cover there anyway but I like them to be a little bit more covered up than they are all right so that covered a little bit better and I definitely like the side with the beauty sponge much better than I do the side with the brush so I'm gonna to try to insert some pictures here so you can see the difference between the two sides again I'm not crazy about how it's sitting on my skin both with the sponge and with the brush it's not my favorite finish it does come off looking a little bit dry and it does seem to highlight pores even though it doesn't have any shimmer in the formula or anything Thing like that but it's not the worst foundation I've ever tried either so we'll see how it wears throughout the day and I'll definitely do some check-ins a little bit later on and let you know my thoughts all right so next let's go ahead with the concealer this is shade 10 vanilla I think it's the lightest shade um, this one says it has caffeine antioxidants anti-pollution anti-blue light without sulfates phthalates no harsh fragrances, oil-free, and medium coverage. So I think the foundation did a pretty good job of covering underneath my eyes, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of the concealer 
Um, let's go right in. I try not to add too much concealer. I'm not a fan of doing that giant like triangle that everybody does. I think it's just way too much, especially because I'm 41 and I have fine lines and texture under my eyes and I really try to limit the amount of concealer I put on these days because it just does not look cute. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't work for me anymore. I used to put a ton and now I find that it just seems to age my under eyes rather than helping them to look better. So I'd almost rather have a little darkness peeking through than have them look cakey. And by the way, I figured I would just use the sponge for the concealer on both eyes because I normally wouldn't use a big foundation brush like this to apply concealer. And also it just seems like this candid formula works best for me with a damp sponge anyway. By the way, the sponge is awesome. This is my first time using it. I was using the one from Flower Beauty, which I really like too, but that one just got old and ratty. And I was at Target this morning and I saw this one. I've heard a lot of great reviews on it and it is really awesome. It's very squishy. Reminds me exactly of the original Beauty Blender. And I think it was like six bucks, I wanna say, so not bad. All right, so as far as the concealer goes, I have pretty much the same opinion of this as I do the foundation right now. It just comes off looking a little bit dry on my skin. My skin is very dry, so that's not really a surprise, but um, it's a very matte finish, and it just is kind of like already sinking into my under eye lines right here. And it also seems to be making this area of my eyelids look kind of textured and crepey, and I'm not really crazy about that either. So, so far, I'm not really in love with either one of these, but again, sometimes as you wear something and it melts into your skin, it ends up looking a little bit better than it did when you first applied it. So I'll definitely do check-ins later about these and see where we're at. All right, and then moving on to blush, I had picked up one of these Revlon blushes in the shade Naughty Nude. I thought it looked really pretty. This is a satin finish, and I haven't tried any of Revlon's powder blushes before. I had tried their blush sticks, the cream ones, and was not a fan of them at all, so I'm hoping that maybe this one is a little bit better. It's really, really sheer. Like, I'm hardly seeing this show up at all. I know it's a lighter color, but I'm actually seeing quite a bit of glow going on too, which is interesting because it says it's a satin finish, but it almost seems more of like a glowy or a shimmery finish. But this is definitely very subtle. It's not overly pigmented at all, which I guess is good if you don't like overly pigmented blushes or you're worried about adding too much color. I feel like you could definitely build this up. All right, so I had to apply like three different layers to get this color to show up much at all. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about trying these out. For some of you, that might be a good thing that it's not an overly pigmented blush. For others, you may want to completely skip this. I think if you have a skin tone that's any deeper than mine, layering this up wouldn't even do anything probably um, because I'm pretty pale and I still needed three layers to get this to show up. So then moving on to brows. I found this new brow product from Revlon at Rite Aid the other day and this says it's the Colorstay Brow Creator Micro Pencil Powder and Brush. So it has like a tiny little brow pencil here, then a powder somewhere in the middle, and then a spoolie on the end. So I got it in the shade Blonde and let's just go ahead and open this up. I haven't even touched it yet so we'll see. All right, so here is the little brow pencil right there. It's really a skinny pencil, which is nice. And then you unscrew this and there's the powder right there. And then there's a little spoolie on the end here. I'm probably not gonna use the powder. I don't normally need to fill in all that much, um, but let me just see what this color looks like. Oh my God, this is, I don't know if this is gonna actually work for me. First of all, it's really hard to get it to show up. It's very like stiff but it also kind of has this like yellowy, like waxy color. <laughs> it almost looks like the color of my hair. Normally I get blonde pencils because they're more of like an ashier taupe color, but this is like really, it's actually like a blonde pencil. All right, let's try this out. Yeah, it's way lighter than my brows. I just wasn't sure because sometimes the next one up is like a brunette and it's usually too warm. And as you can see, my brows are very ashy toned and cool toned so I usually want usually I'll try to find something in between like a taupe that's in between a blonde and a brunette but I didn't see that option here I just saw blonde or then the next one looked like it was going to be too dark and too warm toned um, so let's just see 
I mean, it's okay. It's definitely a stiffer brow pencil, but as I'm using it, it seems like it's getting a little bit easier to work with. So maybe just on the outside, it was a little stiff. All right, so I guess it came out okay. It's definitely not my favorite brow pencil. I've really been liking the one from CoverGirl lately. That one's very similar to the Anastasia Brow Wiz, and I really love the color range in that one too. Um, this one, it's not really doing it for me, even though it's not horrible. I can make it work. I should also mention while I'm doing this other brow that I've been getting a lot of comments. Some are just very like genuinely curious and respectful while others are just rude and I go ahead and delete those. But um, I get a lot of questions about why my brows are so uneven and like I guess people are trying to figure out whether it's because they're different lengths or because one's higher than the other. And basically for some reason this brow the muscle underneath always wants to like raise it up and it's an involuntary thing i don't mean to do it and i it's something i never even noticed until i started my youtube channel and i'm watching myself in video and thinking that why does my face look so weird and uneven and it's actually kind of annoying to me because it makes my eye looks look uneven too like because this brow is lifted higher I can see more of my lid space on this eye and this eye is way more hooded so it always looks like I have more eyeshadow or that my eyeshadow is higher on this eye than it is on this one so it's something that's just really annoying to me and I wish that I could fix it but I really don't know how like I was looking online at different ways to solve that problem and from what I saw there are some exercises you can do to try to strengthen the other eyebrow so I've been kind of doing those like where I'll hold this one down and try to like lift this one and strengthen those muscles over there um, I don't know if it's really helping or not I guess the other thing I could always do is go and get Botox which I've never even touched Botox in my life and I'm a little bit afraid of what that would do so I would probably try doing the exercises first but um, you I could always get Botox in this brow to like relax this muscle and just make it stop doing that um, but I'm like afraid like what if it made it droop or made it look weird I don't know I just feel like I can try to maybe exercise this brow and see if I can try to make them a little bit more even or just try to be conscious of this one and stop doing it but I don't know at the end of the day I don't think it's a huge deal and the people who are commenting and saying like it's distracting or it's bothering them I mean I don't know what to tell you other than just don't watch but I just figured I would let you guys know like what the situation is with my brows because I've just been getting like so many comments on it lately all right so I'm not really loving my brows today but I'm not sure if that's the pencils fault or if it's just because I got the wrong color because it's such a light color I really wanted to keep adding more and more product to try to build it up and make it darker and in turn I think it just I added too much and now they're just kind of getting smudgy and weird and it was like hard to work with after a while so um, I think the pencil was okay. Like I said, it started out kind of stiff and then it ended up being a little bit easier to work with. So anyway, it's okay, but I definitely like the CoverGirl one a little bit better. So anyway, moving on to eyeshadow. I had picked up these two little palettes at Walgreens recently. I think there were five or six different shades, but I really like these and I figured I would pick them up first and try them out before I bought any more because I've had the worst luck with Revlon eyeshadow palettes and I haven't tried them on my eyes yet so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this one today Maverick um, just because I think it'll go with what I'm wearing a little bit better this one is more of like a purple and pink color scheme but first I'm gonna go ahead and put up swatches I think that they swatch really well actually I was super surprised they feel a lot like the CoverGirl True Naked palettes or the Maybelline City minis they're that really sort of smooth formula the shimmer shades are really buttery and silky and soft and the matte shades are super soft as well a little bit on the powdery side but not too bad um, so I'm really really excited to go ahead and play with these on my eyes because I was really impressed with how well they swatched the only thing was look at the pan size compared to my finger um, it was really hard to get my finger into these but I think it should be easier with a brush since it's so much smaller all right so for my crease shade I'm gonna start with this one right here the second one in this sort of like medium brown shade it's a matte very warm toned let's see whoa are you guys seeing this pigment oh my goodness that is like intense right out of the gate now the trick is going to be how blendable is it because i'm going to have to blend this out a lot 
but it's very smooth. It actually seems to be blending really easily. It doesn't look patchy. It looks really smooth on my lid. Let me get a different brush. I'm just gonna get my larger, like a clean brush and try to soften these edges. So despite all of that pigmentation, I think this blended out so beautifully. It's so smooth. It's not patchy at all, and it took it down almost right away. It's a lot more diffused, and it's not like that crazy heavy pigment. I mean, we'll have to see how the rest of the shades apply, but I'm starting to really get excited about this palette now because it's extremely easy to work with and blend out, and the pigmentation is definitely there. Okay, so then for my lid, I'm gonna take this sort of rosy, coppery shade right here. This is so pretty. I guess it's more like a rose gold. Thing is, it's just really hard to get my brush into this pan. That's the one downside to this palette for sure, so far. All right, let's see how it applies with the brush. Yeah, so I was only able to get it like on the tip of my brush instead of the whole thing. So I'm gonna have to dip back into the palette now and get more. I feel like if I could have covered my whole brush it would have made it easier to just apply it in one coat to the lid rather than having to go back in and pick up more product. But I guess it's not really the end of the world because this looks really, really pretty. And again, like it's nicely pigmented just with my brush. I didn't even apply it with my finger and it looks really good. So let's just blend these two together now. This one blends really nicely too. I mean, I just love how these are just coming right together and they're not patchy. I don't have any fallout down here on my face. This is really, really nice. All right, so next I'm just gonna take some of this really deep burgundy shade on the end and apply it to the outer corners. So I guess the one drawback to this formula, because it's so blendable, when you really want that pigment there, it kind of blends away and you have to apply more. It was fine for my crease because I didn't want my crease to be super pigmented. I wanted it to be more diffused, but I kind of want this outer corner color to stand out a little bit. And as I blend it, it kind of just starts to blend away. So I find myself having to add more. But for me, that's not a big deal. I would rather add more than have too much and then have a problem trying to blend it out. You can always add more, but it's harder usually to take away, so I don't really mind that too much. I just find that it takes a little bit longer to do your eyes, so if you're in a hurry, it's not always a good thing, but otherwise I like it. So very impressed with this one. I can officially say this is the first Revlon eyeshadow palette that I've ever liked. I thought that this was super pigmented, really easy to pick up with a brush, and very easy to blend. So Revlon definitely stepping it up with this one. All right, so then keeping it all Revlon, I ended up grabbing this mascara right here. This is their Mega Multiplier Mascara. I've tried the one with the red cap and I didn't love it, so I never tried any of the other ones from this range that they have. But when I was looking at this in the store, it actually says that this is a tubing mascara and it also contains fibers. So I love tubing mascaras. I've been really into them lately. I had no idea that this was a tubing mascara, so I'm very excited to try this one out and see how it is. I'll show you what the brush looks like really quick. It's kind of like one of those cone-shaped, tapered bristle brushes. So let's see how it is. Okay, so here's one eye done, and this one definitely tends to get a little bit more clumpy as you build coats on the inner corner here. Some of my lashes are kind of sticking together, and the more I tried to like comb them out with the brush, the clumpier they got. But it does definitely give a lot of length and volume. I feel like it gives more impact than the one with the red cap did. So, all right, let's go and do the other eye. All right, so what do you guys think? I feel like this did give me really big lashes, so I do love that about it. It is on the clumpier side, but I can work around that, maybe use a lash comb to comb it through. The true test is gonna be if it smudges underneath my eyes, and most of the time, tubing mascaras don't. That's sort of their claim to fame, as well as being easy to remove. So I guess we'll just have to see throughout the day how this is holding up, but so far, I really like it. 
And then last but not least, I'll be using the Revlon Kiss Plumping Lip Cream. This is in the shade Barely Blush, and I picked this up a while ago, so I figured I would use it. I'm not even sure if it's gonna completely go with the look that I did today because it's pink and I did sort of like an orangey red eye look, but we'll just see how it goes. I haven't really used this yet, and I wanted to try it out in a video, so let's see. So I really, really like this color a lot. It has a nice vanilla scent too that's not off-putting, which I'm happy about because in the past Revlon has had sort of like a fruity scented lip products that I didn't care for. So I do like the scent of this. And I feel like lip cream is definitely the right word for it. It feels like a gloss, like it's very slippery and slidey, but at the same time, it's more opaque, like a cream. So I would say it's kind of a hybrid between a gloss and a liquid lipstick, not a matte liquid lipstick, but just like a regular one. And it is plumping, so I feel a little bit of a tingle going on, but it's not intense at all. I can't stand those ones that are super intense. This one is very, very mild. It's not really bothering me that much. So overall, I like it. I just don't really know how long this is gonna last because I feel like it's a really sort of, like I said, slippery formula. So I feel like it's gonna come off pretty easily, but uh, I'll keep you updated throughout the day on this as well. All right guys, so I'm back as promised for a check-in and as you can see, it's nighttime now. It's actually about dinner time. So I've been wearing everything for around eight hours and I definitely have some thoughts. So first of all, things I love, the eyeshadow palette. It lasted so well. My eyeshadow looks the same as it did when I put it on, so I'm really, really impressed with that. I also really like the mascara too. It made my lashes look really big and full, and it didn't smudge or flake underneath my eyes, so a thumbs up for that. But if you don't like clumpy mascaras, you may not like this formula, because it does tend to clump up a little bit, but um, I just feel like it helps to make my lashes look a lot thicker, which I really like. But other than that, I I wasn't too crazy about everything else. The blush kind of faded on me and really wasn't too pigmented to begin with. And because I have really dry skin, I don't want to keep adding lots of layers of powder to my face because it just adds to like that cakey look. I'd rather just apply one layer of blush and be done. And also with the lip plumping cream, about a half an hour after I applied it, my lips started to feel gritty, almost like it was like coming apart and it just like left me with this feeling almost like when you have chunky glitter pieces in a lipstick it felt like that when I rubbed my lips together and it really didn't stay on too long and I didn't notice any plumping effects so I would probably just go ahead and skip that one um, the brow product I wasn't too impressed with either I mean it stayed on but I just felt like it was a little bit hard to work with and I probably wouldn't use that powder thingy in the middle and I really don't think it's better than the covergirl one that I've been using so I'm probably just gonna stick to that one and then as far as the foundation and concealer are concerned, I do like the fact that there's sort of an anti-pollution formula. We have so much like blue light in our lives right now between TVs and cell phones and all that stuff, environmental type pollution. And I do like that it sort of defends against that. But for me, I just feel like it looks dry and almost like I'm wearing a mask and it's really highlighting things I don't want it to. It's hard to see in the lights because it kind of diffuses everything. Let me see if I turn them off what happens or if you'll be able to see any better what I'm talking about. So, okay, like these lines right here. Normally if I wear a more hydrating foundation, I don't see that. Like they look a little more plumped out. Um, and I don't know if like you can see the cakiness on my chin down here, but it just kind of is like breaking apart and looks kind of cakey. I don't know, I feel like it's still not too apparent. But basically what it looked like in the photos that I showed earlier is what it still looks like now. So I'm just not really a fan of what this looks like on my dry skin and more mature skin. Um, so you may have a different experience. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite Revlon products are. Have you tried any of these new things and what were your thoughts on them? I would love to hear from you guys and talk about it in the comments section. Also, um, if you like this video, Video and found it helpful don't forget to hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I do lots of reviews during the week and then hauls every Sunday so thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you next time